Hello and welcome to today's tutorial. My name is Joseph. I hope everyone's doing well today. So, in today's video, I'll be covering a simple save and load um, to text file tutorial. This will allow you to save things, export things um, for your game on PC. So, before I get into that, I want to thank everyone for the channel. You guys are all amazing. Um, you guys are really helping drive things forward and I have to really thank you guys. You have no clue. So, let's get into this video. So, save and load systems are a pain in the ass. Um, I've just spent the past extra half an hour debugging this code because I found something really dumb I had to fix. So, what, do, what is it and how does it work? The basic idea is any game you play, you create a save file and yeah, it basically puts critical data in there. So, in this tutorial, I'll be just showing you some basic read-write applications you can do with it. Um, so... The first things first, when we write the code, you can see I've got a load, save, um, I've set up a room and I've just got two sprites, just nothing fancy, you guys should be expecting that by now. So we'll look at the save function first, which is the first part of the code I wrote. And it's gonna look a little overwhelming, but it's not too bad once you understand what it's doing. I need a save ID for my save file, which I've just created as a temporary value because I'm not needing this critical information. Um, you can set this to be a more permanent variable, but I don't really see a need. Line count is massively important because it keeps track of how many lines there are in your program or in your save file, more importantly, allowing you to work out where to reference and how to get files back. So basically the first step is, is we open a file and I've just called this text. The first line I write is I just write a text or a string called oi, just so I know it's working. And then I add one to my line count. Um, then the line count is equal to itself plus a random value of 20 to 100 or 1,000. Um, I then write the line count to the save file, adding one to itself as well to account for its own writing. The next step is I actually generate a bunch of X and Y coordinates based on room height and width. Um, and the last thing I do is I close my say or oh, my file because otherwise I'll generate memory leaks. You will also notice throughout the file I've got these um, write-ins, which just basically means drop down a line. The other thing to bear in mind is you have to be specific when writing a string and when writing a value. A value is read as real, a string is read as a string. So it's important to know that distinction. So now looking at that, you're gonna say, well, what's the point of this? Like it looks pretty straightforward. So when I run the program, how do I know if it works? So if I hit the save key right now, you're not gonna see anything. And if I hit the load key, I'm just gonna get an error. And that's because I've got no safety to protect against if the file doesn't exist. But that does tell us something. It tells us the file doesn't exist. So if I pull this over here, you guys are going to see that I've got this random location, my computer, C drive users, app data local, um, and then my game maker save slash load. So if I hit the save key now, you're going to see it's going to generate me a file. And you can see the file's got size. It's 15 kilobytes big. And if I boot that up, you're going to see a bunch of random information dumped into it. So you'll see in the logic here that we've used, my first step is I've written oi. I know that because I've written that. Next, I've got a line count. So I know there's 726 lines. This end number should always be even because I'm writing two values. If I'm writing one value, it will be odd. Um, oh no, sorry, I lie because I've also got Oi there, it's just coincidental that I've got a pairing. But yeah, so bear in mind you should know roughly how many lines you should be writing. Otherwise things can get a bit painful. So the load function is basically the reverse. So if I load my load function up to show you guys, you're going to see that I've got three steps in here. I've got an array controller, I've got a star count, which just controls the array, so it just remembers how many I've got. So my first step is, as, other than the usual check for ID when clicking, is I load the file and I do a line count as temporary values and I reset my star count. So that just resets the bases for the program. 
Next step is I do a load file, same as before. I load my text file. I actually ignore my first testing string just to make sure things worked because I don't need to load OI into the program. I'm just making sure it worked. Next, I do a read in line. So you'll see this is different. So instead of a write in, it's a read in. And basically, I continue to reference the load function. I then read the line. So you can see how this is different from the save where I'm actually just pulling whatever on that line is into this value. I then read in another line. I then start my array generation. So I basically generate all my new stars in the system. And then I resize my array. I didn't actually even know this function existed until today because this is what caused me some havoc before. I resize my array into an X and Y to the same sizes as my star count. So it trims any extra entries and then I close the file. Again, if you don't close, it will create memory leaks. Under the draw function, I draw itself, or I draw the button. That again, stumped me today because I was working through it. I was like, why am I not drawing my object? That would be why, remember to draw self. Um, and then I just run a simple for loop with all the entries. So if I re rerun the program, and now I can hit load. So you'll see here, I've still got this data, right? So if I hit load, it loads straight in. And if I go save, because now it's gonna regenerate, it should regenerate different stars. But what about if I edit the program? So if I go through here and let's just get rid of all of this. Let's say I've got four lines and I start at 30, 30, um, 100, 100, um, 300, 300, 600, 600 and save. So, oops, sorry, that should be eight lines. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Sorry, ten lines. Save, and let's go load, and let's see what happens. I'll either break this or it will work. Hey, look at that. So I've got all my stars now in a random line. So that's a load save system. It's pretty straightforward. I hope it helps you guys out. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. These things can get a bit, a bit complicated and I have done some quite advanced things with these in the past. Um, one of the things you might want to look at is adding some slight level of encryption to prevent players from getting into your save files and rooting around and changing stats they shouldn't have access to. But I hope you guys stay safe, have a great day, and I'll talk to you guys later.